We may be weary, but we are not broken, and we will always rise to the occasion. Council, we support you, your political bravery, and any future efforts required to defend our town. Thank you. So, for all intent and purposes, I'm a Sunfield resident. 
I have an aunt and uncle that are members of this church. I have a brother that lives in Summerfield. I have a nephew that lives in Summerfield. And I grew up on the Hillsdale Lake, swimming in that lake and, and riding horses. So I may live in Greensboro and have a Greensboro address, but I'm Summerfield. On the way over here, I passed Lake Higgins after barely getting my car out of my driveway, and I saw a box screen sitting on the edge of the railing to protect the cars and pedestrians from Lake Higgins. And I thought, wow, it's not my place to go take that box screen and put it in my truck and take it to the dump. And then about 10 seconds later, I said, yes, it is, if I care about this place. Sounds real corny, but believe me, I'm speaking from my heart. I love this place. And Mr. Couch, I have nothing against him. I don't know him. I don't, I don't just have this taste for him because he's worth several hundred million dollars. Good for him. Really, good for him. Seriously, I don't begrudge that. But there is a way for Mr. Couch to develop this land without raping it and desecrating it. There is, and he knows it. And the city council knows it. And I'm just saying, hell no. Not no, hell no. And I, and I also want to clear something up for everybody. All this BS about, oh, most of the Summerfield residents here feel kind of pro. No, they don't. And I'll tell you why I know that. Because I'm on a block that's connected to Summerfield, and I'll be glad to take a picture of the 500 and some hits I have on a post I put on there. I posted an article from the Northwest Observer. Yeah, that's me. Okay, I posted it. I didn't embellish it. I didn't edit it. I didn't change it. I posted it. And then within a week, I got 500 and some hits. And I would venture to say conservatively, 98% of those hits were hell no. So we clear it off any confusion that any other surveys or any other things people have said tonight about, oh no, we're equal. No, we're not. No, we're not. Okay? So I'll send you a copy, a picture of that page that shows those 500, black check coming over, it's 533 hits. Thank you, Mr. Carr. And they continue to come in. And they continue to come in. Commercial 
with a value exceeding $30 million per acre. As a question of supply and demand, there's a huge demand for these types of neighborhoods built in the manner of our traditional cities and towns in the South, but a very limited supply. So the price just elevates to these absurd levels. It's also a function of the fact that if what you build is a sense of inclusiveness, or if that's what you're going for, a sense of inclusiveness and belonging, then every time a house, a home, an apartment gets built, it adds to the value and gets better. But if what you promote is exclusivity, isolation, then you take away from what's being offered. You have this, you get this fear thy neighbor approach. I've been witness to the energy and effort that David has expended to make Sullivan Summerfield more beautiful. His approach has been as a collaborative community partner in Alabama. That partnership is evidenced by a willingness to listen, respond, and make revisions over the past six years. I've never seen such a level of patience and grace. And I'm proud to be part of this program to advance beauty for the town of Summerfield. I hope you will support this text amendment. Thank you. Mr. Craig. Mr. Romano. Good night to all of you, and thank you for your time, council members. I am Fabio Romano, 763 Hanson Forest Drive, Summerfield. Thank you, council members, for your vote 4 to 1 to the the text amendment in April last year. So the question is, why are we here again tonight? I think we are here today because the applicant does not care about the interest of our community. We are here today because the applicant does not have respect of the people of Summerfield. Because the applicant does not have respect of you, council members. And of the, and, uh, of the previous vote. We are here today because the applicant only does care about one thing. The money that he can make. This text, this text amendment, amendment must, must be denied because it's going to destroy the values uh, and the soul of Summerfield. Let's see a couple of examples just for uh, the time being uh, short. First, the school. In Summerfield, we are lucky because we have one of the best school systems in the Guilford County. If you talk to school principals and uh, teachers, they can tell you that higher density population means worse education levels. We cannot sell the future and the success of our children for the interest of one builder. Second, the safety and the security. Summerfield is a safe and secure place for our families. We don't want higher density population because that means more crimes and less safety in the community. This text amendment must be denied because Summerfield does not need the 1,000 apartment. Does not need the 5,000 apartment. 500 apartments. Does not need the one apartment. <laughs> Which are the reason for apartments in a town of 12,000 people? So, who really needs apartments? The apartments are needed by the applicant who cares only about making as much money as possible. Builders can build in summer field. Uh, Yeah, sorry. <laughs> builder can build in Summerfield and the applicant can build too, but respecting the actual laws based on low density population because Summerfield is not Greensboro, is not Washington DC, is not New York City. Today Summerfield is known as one of the best places to live in North Carolina and USA. So we are here today for a simple choice, to destroy Summerfield or to defend, to save Summerfield. In conclusion, Council Members, the right things to do is to deny this text amendment, as you have done not even one year ago. You have been our heroes, and uh, we hope that you will keep being our heroes. As a citizen and resident in Summerfield, I invite you to vote no to the text amendment. Thank you.
Glenn Jennings' uh, 5800 Francis movie court for 18 years. Uh, my wife Shirley took her 83. She went home with the grandkids. So she won't be fine. Um, I would ask you tonight, or, or ask for both of us, that you uh, not pass the text amendment and that you um, find some element of closure to this uh, continuing frustration, exhaustion, uh, irritation expressed by many of the citizens as these meetings continue to occur. I ask myself, what is this? How can this happen? What's going down here? And, um, the best thing I could find was that there's a, a phenomenon of a suburban socialism that uses techniques of this nature. The, the process is one of bringing a um, sense of sharing and uh, a sense of the white picket fence collective uh, in the order of um, not following any of the existing ordinances or codes to the T, and always getting around those, especially by uh, negating the voting process. So I thought I would just uh, emphasize to you that the outcome of that is uh, that in the end, you can't win, the radical change occurs, and the um, process overcomes so that um, so that I in looking at this there's a um, person named Ollie DeRose in uh, Great Britain who um, devised many of the concepts in this uh, collective process and uh, he worked for Bernie Sanders in the last uh, presidential election in Nevada as one of the directors but uh, I would just encourage you to accept that there's no way to politically compromise it just doesn't exist with the nature of the uh, pursuit of these meetings and the expectation that at some point the exhaustion and the um, fear and the uh, sense of this will never end um, does win. So, so we would just ask you to both um, uh, vote no for the amendment and uh, to say absolutely we're going to adhere to the electorate vote uh, to the established code and ordinance as it is and, and put an end to the process of saying maybe we can find a compromise that meets the uh, um, well wishes of all. I think we'll just have to go with the uh, existing um, political process here in the Executive Town Council. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin uh, Kenjarski, if you would please come to this microphone. Melissa, if you would please come to this microphone, I'll have a last name. Daniel Feinstein, if you'll please come to this microphone. And Jared Williams, if you'll please come to this one. I am Kevin Kondarski. I live at 6792 Meadowview Drive in Summer. In uh, one of the latest Northwest Observer articles, Chris uh, Barrett um, had an interesting quote. He wrote about the January 26 planning meeting that lasted over four hours. And he basically said it was a, a replay of prior meetings, which kind of seems a little bit like tonight. I completely agree with Chris. It was not only a replay of prior meetings, but it appeared that the committee came to the, mid the meeting already knowing how they would vote. Frankly, I believe that each of you already knows how you will vote tonight, and there's nothing that I or anyone that said anything tonight is going to change your mind. And frankly, I, I, looking at the body language throughout tonight, I just think you guys knew what you were going to do when you walked in. You know, the easy button for me would be to, to you know, to stay home, and get back, you know, the precious hours that, that we've had here. But I decided not to hit that easy button. I decided to attend tonight because I was fortunate to attend some of the first meetings where the subject of affordable housing was discussed. 
you know, before your meetings became this emotionally charged event, we actually had people that would show up that were truly people of lower income. And you probably, some of you were, you were here for that. It, it was actually before you were mayor. I remember people coming to the, to the meetings and they courageously stood in front of the council to convey their frustration with the lack of entry level housing. I'll never forget the teacher that stood in front of some of you and they, she explained how difficult it was for her to find an affordable home in Summerfield. And she was quizzed as to how she could say that. There was all these different options. And she talked about her search for a house that wasn't a fixer-upper, and her plea to the council was just absolutely sincere. You could just see it hear in her voice that she was sincere. And unfortunately, one of the no means, no opponents was in attendance that evening, and callously told her to work harder and to consider a side hustle. I've noticed that that young teacher, she's not here tonight. I don't blame her. The easy button for her was to stay at home to avoid further embarrassment. I continue to attend these meetings because I firmly believe that our town needs sensible plan development that includes affordable housing. I want you to, to vote, no, uh, vote yes to the text amendment, but m most importantly, I'd ask each of you to think about what you can do to make this, this town and these meetings more peaceful. Maybe if you were able to do that, that young teacher would actually be in attendance tonight. And she would be, wouldn't be embarrassed, and she'd be able to stand up, and she'd be able to talk about what her needs are for living in Summerfield. If, if our town leaders have an attitude of no means no for certain classes of individuals, the divisiveness in our town will continue regardless of what David Couch does with his land. The need for thoughtful plan development in Summerfield is just not going to go away. In closing, Hi, I'm Melissa Feinstein. I'm at 5791 Lincoln Court, and I just want to thank um, Council for letting us be here today to speak. And uh, I mean, you guys have just sat there so attentive and paid attention to all of us. So from the bottom of my heart, I truly appreciate it. I agree with some of the people who have already spoke that we need some regulations with this coming back and back and back. I think you guys put a year limit on a year. Um, time frame on it, which is great. I appreciate that, and we need to do more things like that. And then other cities or counties put fees on it so that people, when they come in front of you guys and they make us all come out, that they're really serious about what they're presenting. It's not just, oh, I'm going to drop apartments from 600 to 599. We can't keep doing this. We're tired. And we just appreciate you guys having us all. So thank you for that. Um, also, this text amendment uses form based codes. We've heard this before. Um, less than 1% of America uses this. And there's good reason for it. It's not good. It's too subjective. It lacks cohesion. It takes away from the planning and participation from the citizens. And it's um, prone to litigation. Um, the crime, we've talked about that. Um, the developer told us that. Crime is going to go down in the apartments. But if you go to the 